All right. So welcome, Sheila. And so happy that we can have this conversation. And uh, what I love is that you have dedicated so much of your time and energy to really understand some really basic thing that we all hear about, but we often get confused about. And as I was speaking to you, you said that one of the topics you found very perplexing for people is the topic of self-love and what self-love is not. <laughs> and maybe yeah. from that coming to what it really is. Yeah. So uh, in today's conversation, we're going to be uh, discussing about your journey, about uh, this, this, pro this understanding of self-love and also how to practice it. Yes. And so I'd love to hear from you. Can you begin by telling us a little bit about yourself and how did you come to do what you do? Sure. Thanks, Nithya. Thank you for having me on your show here. Um, my name, as I go in the outside world, is Sheila Ramon, and I am a Master Spirit Life Coach, an NLPK practitioner, and a Metaphors of Movement Coach. Now, Metaphors of Movement... I bring this in, uh, into my introduction because metaphors of movement is a fairly new modality and it actually explores the conversations that we have and the metaphors that we use in our daily conversation to actually figure out where we are at any point of time in our heads and which gives us a much clearer picture, a horoscope of our issues, so to speak. So I've been practicing this modality now for about past past year. And in addition to that, I do a whole lot of other modalities that I've learned over the course of time. EFT, I do uh, radical forgiveness, I do Kundalini Reiki, I do bark flower therapies, all of these which I bring into my session as and when required. So this is what I do in the external world. In the internal world, I think I'm an eternal learner and I love <laughs> learning and exploring newer concepts to see how it fits and helps me in my life. And once I practice it and put it into my life, I then take it out to my clients or whoever comes to me, ask for help. And it was during this course that I put together a book based on all my learnings and all the various modalities that I've learned. I put them all together into a comprehensive book called I Complete Me because I realized that most of the issues that we have in our life is because we do not really love others. We always think it is selfish to love ourselves and we were taught to put others first. And because of the various issues that I went through in my life, which is not being able to stand up for myself, not being able to speak for myself, not being able to say no, not being able to set boundaries. I went through a whole lot of pain, being suppressed, suffocated, feeling, feeling like I had no voice and no identity in the world and constantly comparing. And this pain point kind of pushed me into exploring this, this very important concept of self-love. And that is what I want to actually bring out to the entire world. So when I asked you about self-love, you said you want to speak first about what self-love is not. So do you want what to tell us what, what, what is it not? <laughs> Mainly because, you know, the moment you say self-love, people have some very, very concept. It's, it's the new age word that is being thrown around, self-love, self-care. And no one really has an idea what to do with it. So I realized the best way to start from is the point that most of us understand and recognize, which is not self-love, which is one constantly criticizing ourselves. We have this negative loop which keeps going on in our head every time, whether we look in the mirror, whether we meet someone, whether we go out in the world, we are constantly talking to ourselves. And I know that most of the time we are not talking very kindly to ourselves. We are saying, I'm not good enough, I'm not tall enough, I'm not short enough, I'm not pretty enough, I'm not smart enough. We have so many reasons why we are not enough in this world. And we're constantly comparing, comparing, comparing to everyone else around us. That is one of the first clues to that this is not self-love. So self-criticism self -criticism and the constant inner critic is not self-love. Yes, not self-love at all. We all have this mean inner voice, I think, which, which goes, which plays in an automatic loop the moment we wake up in the morning. Yeah. So that is something that we, uh, that is definitely not self-love. The second thing that we, uh, that is not self-love is this procrastination that we do. We don't do anything that is good for us because we are constantly are scared. We scare ourselves to death. That is, that is again not self-love. Third thing, we believe every disaster that can ever happen in our lives and we go through life living in complete fear of what can happen i know i did this when my kids were small i was living in constant paranoia of i think them being killed or them being kidnapped and 
and you know the the worst things that could happen to them and and i know that now when i look back with my with this what this vision that we have when when we are far ahead is that i realize that i wasted a lot of energy simply scaring myself to death so that is another way that we don't love ourselves the fourth way that we yeah so there's self criticism there is putting off what's really important and procrastination yes. Yes. and there's constant worrying and projecting right. the worst into the into into yes. the future scaring that's ourselves another. to death that's it scaring ourselves to death and <laughs> that's what we do <laughs> this, these are the main ways that i see how procrastination works the fourth one is not being able to say no not being able to set healthy boundaries that is that is a very very important thing is i see people bending over backwards uh, becoming constant door mats and then see if you're doing it all with a willing heart and happy doing it then it's okay but if at the end of it you feel resentful and you grudge what you're doing oh, that's not self love that's where you actually need to start setting boundaries because yeah. most people believe that boundaries are walls that we're building between two people it's not i really believe that bound uh, boundaries that you set are like gates that you have which just lets the toxicity out and just lets mm. unconditional love in that's very and that's one of the important things about uh, self love the so this is very practical one. the way you described it i think we can all we can all relate to some of these things that you're saying yes. very practical way this there's one more fifth one yeah go ahead i think there are plenty of them but whatever i remember oh. <laughs> 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 i think the um, sixth one is uh, not i think we all i think we said we are, we are on the fifth we are, we are on the fifth one right now yeah. fifth one not yeah. speaking up for ourselves not standing up for ourselves that is another thing that we do we are willing to take whatever crap is being laid out on us that is one of the other it's things it's similar to not saying it's similar to not the fourth saying. point right not being fourth able to point. say no it's quite similar yes. to that similar to not saying one yet standing up and asking for what we want is something that we don't ah. do so that's how it becomes right, different right, right. from not saying there is I one see. one way you say no and the other one is where you say yes to so right. what you want so yeah. those those are the two things that we need to differentiate between and act upon so these are what again uh, what i think are not self and this i think most people most of us go through this in that and then how would you is there do you also define self love in a positive way in terms of what it is yes see when i first described this as self love i thought i was the only one who was talking about it and was very proud of this description but now i realize that once it's there in the consciousness whoever is open and willing receives it which is that when you're in an aircraft and the oxygen mask falls down the instructions that are given are very clear the stewardess the host of aerostat says that you have to take the oxygen mask and first put yes. it to yourself your yes. mouth and inhale the oxygen before you help someone else yes. and this i thought was a very 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 powerful expression of self love because you can never ever give anything that you don't have so if you're not filled with kindness for yourself how do you expect to be kind to others if you don't have nice words to say about yourself how do you say nice words about others if you don't have any love for yourself how do you give love to others so this is very important way to understand most people say that you know if i have to give myself love first that means i'm selfish it's not it's just that we've been conditioned to believe that everyone else needs to be put first and your needs have to be put later and last the thing is if your needs are not hurting someone else and if it's not at the cost of someone else then you need to do it otherwise of course we take the ecology into cons- uh, consideration and we figure out how is it that we can put our needs and then we can put our needs first but we need to have that clear so- demarcation So what you're saying is, from all the things you've learned and the different practices and modalities and therapies that you've learned, yes. you've decided that this is one really critical one. And if you if you can start with this one, everything else starts to fall in place. Is fall that is that what you're saying? I like the way you said that. I decided. I <laughs> I didn't <laughs> I didn't decide that self love could be the first one. I actually found out that uh, this is the one that really works first. and i see it, this with the see i coach a lot of young kids that is kids yeah. in the age, ages of 18 to 24 they come here with mostly with this issue they are constantly comparing themselves with someone else and they they have no self esteem they have no happiness and one of their huge quest is i'm lonely and how do i find happiness how do i find motivation and the answer is very simple it's so simple that it always causes a my role where so you know what you have to, you have to start with yourself 
use motivation is not something that you buy in a supermarket happiness is not something that you buy in a supermarket it's something that you generate from within and motivation it's not something that descends upon you from heaven and then you start acting on it i think once you start doing despite not feeling like doing or despite not feeling motivated that's when you start seeing the actions is when the motivation actually starts coming in and that's when you start feeling happier and that is one of the first tenets of self love start with yourself so uh, this journey of self love is it something that you have uh, kind of learned from other teachers or it's something which has slowly evolved through your own understanding no not, not through my uh, through my own understanding i the first time that i came in contact with this concept of self love was when i accidentally stumbled upon this workshop by louis hay you louis can see your life yeah and that was when it was an actual eye opener because until that time i was you know sitting in my own pile of whatever and blaming <laughs> and blaming everyone else for it and when i went here one of the things that i learned is that life is a mirror and everything that you see outside is a reflection of what is happening inside in your inner universe and if you need to change you need to start with yourself i found that a very empowering concept it was scary of course it was scary because suddenly you can't blame anyone else you have to blame yourself uh, which again i learned through trial and error that is not the right way to blame yourself but i realized that it's much easier to change myself than to change someone else because all of us have tried to change someone else right to fit into our perceived boxes yeah. and we know that it's not really very hard i mean it's not really very easy to change another person so the moment i learned that it i can change myself and then changing myself actually changes the environment around me that i thought was a very powerful one and that's when i started learning more about it i studied uh, louis hay's concepts for about 2 years and then i started finding other teachers one of the things that i loved about louise hay is that she says i am not your only teacher i might be one of the teachers that you have please go and find other teachers yes and that i i really love and i've been learning with a lot of whole lot of teachers over 15 16 years now yes. that this journey has started so i found i lost a lot of things which i thought were important in my life uh, some relations went for a toss relationships went for a toss once i started learning this concept of self love and i realized that it's okay because all the things and all the people who are not aligned to you will actually go out of your life and which is a good thing though it seems like a bad thing initially but it really is so when you started thing. when you started standing up for yourself and saying no and saying yes then you're yes. saying that certain relationships did not did not like that new version of you it will definitely not work because one of the <laughs> first things that you'll hear is people saying you've changed Mm-hmm. and when people say you've changed it means you've changed from the way they expect you to behave yes so they're so used to and i think oprah said it in one of her shows so beautifully she said you teach others how to treat you exactly and that is so true that is so true so when once you learn that learn to put yourself up there in the priority list and actually start taking care of yourself i think that's when everything starts shifting because once you are happier you can bring that happiness into every other relationship in your life and then all your relationships actually start working much better yes so now let's let's get into something more practical because i think you, you uh, the people who are listening i think they're sure they've uh, gotten interested and uh, inspired and they can they, i think they recognize what you the truth of what you're saying and all yeah. the like the five qualities you marked out let's see if you can, if i can mm-hmm. remember them one is that you are constantly self critical uh, yes. another one is that you keep procrastinating putting off what's important mm-hmm. uh, another one is that you um, you don't set boundaries yeah what other one what what other no one saying no no saying no yes that's a, saying no. i think that was the fourth one I, there's something in between third one I'm trying to It'll figure out whether anyway. i can remember it's all right it's all right so forgiving ourselves for forgetting also is self love yeah. i think yeah <laughs> forgiving ourselves yes and, self love <laughs> and uh, and also saying yes appropriately saying Adam yes Adam. was another Adam really uh, important thing that you brought up right so these are some of the elements that make up self love now let's get into the actual practice of this and how mm-hmm. can i start improving my if i recognize 
And I think all of us can recognize at least some amount of these four yes. or five things. Mm -hmm. And now let's ask us, let me, I'd like to ask you now, how can we begin this journey of enhancing our relationship with ourselves, improving our relationship with ourselves, and that being the foundation of everything else? Um, Luis, he has a very simple method, which is, which is a mirror work, where you look into the mirror, look into your eyes and say, I love you. So I, I love you and I accept you just the way you are. I think that is the simplest one. But I know that there are a lot of, lot of people who are very embarrassed to look themselves in the eye. And but, but just say it one more time. So basically, 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 we're looking in the mirror. Let's just imagine, let's all of us on this call right now. Let's just imagine okay. we're looking in a mirror. And we'd like, just, we'll repeat after you, Sheila. Yeah. You say, I love myself. I love myself. I love myself exactly as I am. I love myself exactly as I am. If you want to give it some more horsepower, you can say things, you can put your name and say it in various, you yes. can say, Sheila, I love you. I love you, yeah, Sheila. Yeah. And you can say your name, you may not say my name. So <laughs> I, I can actually, why am I looking so in this space? I have, a, I have a mirror right here. I should look at my, so I Nitya, I love you. Yeah. I really love, I think you're really awesome, Nitya, and I love you so much. And uh, it's really a uh, it's, it's really a wonderful journey to be with you on this in this life, and you're the only one. <laughs> so it's awesome, <laughs> awesome. <laughs> it's it's very simple. It's very simple and and so easy to do it. Yeah. So you said some people find this embarrassing. Is that what you said? Yes. When you actually, I remember that when I started it. Also, the moment I looked into the mirror, all I kept seeing is the you know the crow's feet around my eyes how my eyebrows were not shaped, not shaped and you know, all those kind of things. And then I say, wow, okay, this exercise in self-love has now become self-criticism and which is not self-love. So, <laughs> let me start. But uh, as I started doing it and over a period of time, I've become very comfortable. I used to be the kind of person who would not look at myself in the, in the mirrors in the lift. When you're going up in an elevator, I wouldn't look into the mirror. I would, I would ensure that my eyes were, you know, straight ahead. But now I'm very comfortable looking in the mirror and, you know, sometimes under one blow myself and say, wow, good. <laughs> <laughs> so this is one exercise and this is quite simple because you can do it each morning. We look, almost everyone looks in the mirror to comb their hair in the morning. So to brush their teeth, definitely. Brush their teeth, comb their hair. I'm saying just for the time, just for the entire period while you're brushing teeth, just look in the mirror and keep saying, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. I mean, how simple, how much more simpler can it be? That's an easy one, definitely. Very easy one. Uh, there is another one which I give it to a lot of my clients to do because one of the, one of the things that we do as far as self-hatred is, is that we talk negatively and very badly about ourselves. We have the self-talk which is constantly going on in our head. So I always tell people the moment, the thing is, most of us are not mindful, mindful enough. We are doing things on an autopilot. So when you become mindful of the chatter in your head, just stop and distract yourself with a positive thought about yourself. Now, every thought lasts in our head for about seven seconds. That's it. So if we can distract ourselves enough for about eight to nine seconds, that thought pattern is broken. So let's say I'm walking around and I, and I catch myself saying, oh my God, I've not done, I've not written the video blog that I'm supposed to do. I'm always like this. I always procrastinate. I leave it for the last minute. And when I catch myself, I just say, okay, I think back to all the things that I've done. Okay, well done, Sheila. That book was very well received. The last video, video that you did was really very good. And you know, you catch yourself and given some positive affirmation for that period of about eight seconds, which is about two or three statements. And the thought process is broken. So you're saying whenever you catch the inner critic, yeah. you uh, you will then confront the inner critic with two or three statements about yeah. also something good so you, you challenge the inner critic and say all right but also yeah. look at look at what i've been doing you know yes why are you only looking at what i didn't do so you you shift from inner critic to inner coach in a sense if you make your inner critic you you confront is a very good word actually you need to confront your uh, yeah. inner critic all the while yeah. and say let's the, let's say the inner critic says my god you seem to have piled on pounds and all the, you are always eating on now the Diwali, Diwali, you know, the house is filled with sweets and you're constantly <laughs> going and picking up and shoving it into your mouth. You know, that, that's the time that you can tell the inner critic. Okay, fine. I've piled down pounds. Okay, fine. So let's look at what, what can we do to remedy that. So we give her, him or her 
some some job to do some I'm job like, to do instead of just yeah. cutting them off say all right but tell, tell me what to do about it don't just tell me what's wrong so saying, in fact okay, yesterday i was listening i was listening to a talk where someone was saying that you know the boss got really upset because a person came with all these problems and when the boss said well what do you propose he had nothing to propose he said well then don't 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 bring up stuff if you have something even if you have nothing to propose yes think it through and then come up with what you have to propose so i think we can train our inner critic if you have to criticize then come up with a proposition yes. what are we going to do about it and we can train the inner critic don't we, uh, you don't have to do it all alone i'll help you let's both think about what can we do to make this house let's say uh, sweet free Yes. Or let to make let's make this cake free. How can we do that? Nice. So that's something I'm thinking. We should we should take them onto our side. It's so the like other school the, so bully, second, the school bully, yeah, bully. the school bully, the school bully. We always if you talk back to the school bully and get them onto your side, they then become your best friend, right? Yeah. That's something that we can get to do with that. Nice. So the second thing we're learning from you is to. uh not just listen to everything our inner critic say but to challenge the inner critic to confront the inner critic and also to convert the inner critic asking the inner critic what can be done about this yes. and you get the inner critic to your side give it an assignment all right so we this is good this is a good point now what are we going to do about it yeah and i'm i'm here with you like you said mm-hmm. what else can we what else can we practice the most important thing i think um, this is something that that we need to do on a regular basis this is uh, this is a practice that i read somewhere is the done list we always have this list of to do list mm. and we have this list of things that we've never done in our life i think we need to make a done list of all the things that we've achieved in our life uh, big and small whether it's, even if it's making that perfect cup of coffee yes yeah, it's something not everyone can make a perfect cup of coffee even if you pass let's say 10th grade not everyone passes uh, high school true. Yeah. so look at all the things that you've done in your life and this you can write yeah. down every day let's say five things that you've done in your life and don't repeat it i'm sure you can you can pull it on for at least 5 6 months if not more fantastic i think i'm going to start a done list i think i've heard about this concept but i've never done it yeah yeah so i'm going to actually start a done list and uh, I think I've kind of done it in a way uh, because I've made lists of things that I've enjoyed in my life. But yeah. I think this is a slightly different concept, and I'm going to I'm going to explore this one. Yeah, <laughs> so, and it's very simple to do. So you know, the you way I, I, eminent school and school. Yes. I school. I like to challenge people to write a list of hundred and eight. So I think I can I'm going to start with a list of hundred and eight things I've done, and then add five more every day. Yeah. So it becomes a really. I think by the end of the year, I'll have a very really nice, nice and long list. I think I'll start it too today. Start with hundred and eight, and then see. Hundred and eight, and then keep adding to it. <laughs> yeah. So those are three really practical things you've shared with us. One is to look in the mirror and to smile and tell us what do we say again in the mirror that I love you the way I am. I love you, and I accept you just the way you are. Just the way you are. I love and accept yeah. you just the way you are. Yeah. All right. Okay. And love is unconditional. So it's like, love like we talk about unconditional love. Let's start with ourselves. Yes. So you know, I'm not going to obsess over this and that. Just, I just mm-hmm. love you, and you, you have yeah. my unconditional positive regard. Yes. And you're just awesome. I love you. Warts and all, wrinkles and all. Okay, I love you. <laughs> Pounds and all. Yes, I just love you. That's it. I love and accept you. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And the second thing we've learned from you is to become aware of our inner critic and the voice of the inner critic, and yes. to challenge that voice, to question that voice, and to convert that voice into something that becomes an ally, ally. as opposed yes. to something that is against us. Correct. And the third thing we've learned is to start creating a done list. I think done. both a generalized and I think maybe even on a daily basis, what happens with to-do lists is we tend to cross out what we've done, and only we have left is what we've not done. What we've not done. But maybe yes. to also highlight what we have done. And, so that's uh, a very good point. Yes. Yeah. That's good. So yeah, so it's easy to have a done list actually. Yeah. So we'll start with your with the hundred and eight first. I, will, I like that. I'm I'm going to right after this call, I'm going to sit and start making my hundred and eight. Yeah. List. <laughs> and i think there should be some commitment to share it on uh, social media or something so that you know you actually do it and put it out into the world to say that you've done that's your hard work nice. that's yeah. also great so you had i we met at an airport and you said you were going to have a retreat in south india in kerala and yeah. you were telling me the retreat was really powerful so can mm-hmm. you give us a few glimpses of what made your retreat so powerful um see the retreat again is based around based loosely based on my book i complete me can you show the book to people to the viewers Is my book. It's called I Complete Me. I Complete Me. Yes. Yeah. 
a journey to finding your missing pieces right nice. that's uh, that's the descriptor now right. i completely actually talks about how you start with your basic beliefs and how the things that happen between your two years is actually what uh, shapes your life and so you start like i said right in the beginning you start with yourself first mm. and instead of uh, trying to look outside for that perfect partner for that perfect house or that perfect mm. body most of them is a perfect partner that we are looking all all looking out for someone we think i and i saw this very powerfully in that jerry maguire film at the jerry maguire where he mm. says you know i come you complete me no 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 one completes you if <laughs> and if you go by the by the theory which says that you attract someone similar to you that life is a mirror and hands you exactly the same person if you are an incomplete person you cannot have someone you will attract another incomplete person mm. so all you need to do is you have to be complete and whole in yourself that's when you attract really the most perfect mm. relationship so when people come to me for relationship advice especially the younger younger kids lot of lot of young girls and lot of young boys when they come to me for relationship advice the first thing that i tell them is and this is i think i'm very brave that way because i keep you know going through and pushing this concept despite them rolling their eyes at me every now and then <laughs> you you need to actually start loving yourself every part of yourself that's when you actually find the person who will complete who will not complete you who complements you yeah That's Otherwise, nice. you're just trying to find. You know, we have fill in, fill in the gaps, fill in yeah, those fill missing in pieces, gaps. and that gaps don't last for long. I so, mean, in the retreat that you had, we were participants were were trying to live from that place of I'm complete. Yes, what we were doing in the retreat is we were it it was a complete uh, healing and wellness retreat. So, I was taking them through various processes where uh, I was helping them heal their family lineage because we pick up a lot of things while we are in the womb of our mother. and uh, there is a lot of dna which is passed on from our mother and all the the females in her lineage and we pick up a whole lot from our father and and his lineage so we do a lot of we do a womb trauma healing we do a ancestral family healing that was done plus i done did them forgiveness because that is very important concept in relationship you hold on to grudges and live life walking on those coals or holding those coals in your hand burning of burning anger so we had done forgiveness there was a whole lot of work that we had done where we where i'd asked the participants to look at areas that they don't really love which is their shadow selves and those are the areas that we reject as not being good enough and not really things that we don't really want to accept the anger that we have the envy that we have the our, our parts of us which is very resentful or bad and evil because all of us is a combination of the devil and the goddess inside of us and we like to push the devil deep inside the ground and pretend that we are all white and pure driven snow but it really does it's not that unless you accept and integrate the shadow side into you you really cannot be whole so we had done an entire process of how to integrate of integrate and embrace the shadow selves and the another important concept of how do you balance your inner male and inner female this i realized was a concept that a lot of people are not familiar with that you you have your inner male and you have your inner female and based on what the the alignment is inside of us we attract the ma- uh, male and female partners in our life mm. so unless you are balanced inside there's no point trying to change anyone else so you what would be a simple a- way what would be a simple way for us to be more balanced with our male and female there's no simple way i'm sorry it's yeah, what's the complicated what's yeah. the complicated way for us to be a <laughs> one one thing to do is be aware of where we have the imbalance we are really not yeah. aware and to to do that is very simple you look at the results in your life and then you know whether your masculine energy is high or your feminine energy is high and you have to actually balance them balance is it more about energy. reflection then you're looking at your life and you're looking at the results you're getting is that, is that what you're saying to reflect and to check um, No, can I give you a can I give a yeah. small example? Yeah, give give an example. For instance, um, let's say you are a you are a woman with a I I'm a woman with a with a very with a high masculine energy and a very mm. suppressed feminine energy. Mm. So because I have a very dominant male energy, I will attract a male partner into my life who reflects this masculine energy inside of me. 
So I will attract a manipulative, controlling male in my life. Mm -hmm. Now, and men who have, let's say, very weak feminine energy and a very high masculine energy, they will attract a whiny, needy woman in their life. A partner. The mm -hmm. partner will be a needy, whiny partner that you have. So it's very important that you balance both these energies within you so that you find a partner who will also match you. And how do you balance? There are various processes. One of the things is doing a meditation, calling in on your female and masculine energies, asking them what their messages are, and then following through the messages. Mm -hmm. For instance, one of the participants in, in our workshop saw that her feminine energy was a very raggedy old woman. And the masculine energy was a very good looking six pack, one of the popular actors kind of a thing. And she realized that, you know, when you ask them to integrate, she, she saw that the integration was so beautiful because all that the feminine energy said is just please look at me and take care of my needs. Uh, I found this, especially with a lot of women where they don't take care of their own, own needs at all. They, at the basic physical level, they don't even go for a massage or a manicure or a pedicure. They don't say they don't have, have the time. I'm not saying that's the only thing that you need to do. But uh, I'm saying, you know, that's a basic, basic things also is not done. They don't eat on time. They don't sleep on time. They're not bothered about their careers or about their money or any of those things because they're so busy taking care of everyone else. And in these cases, the feminine energy is pretty weak. So you need to balance and up that quotient and balance the energies. Beautiful. So I think your retreat was really about all the different dimensions of coming to completeness and wholeness. So yeah. things like our ancestors, things like our polarities within us. Yeah. And uh, this was, this was a journey shadows. of, yes, and, and the, exactly. The shadows are a big, very big part. All the parts of us, we divide into these are good parts, these are not so good parts. And so all these ways you explore. So these seem to be the deeper dimensions of self-love then. Yes. From what I'm understanding. Because self love because self love is so widely used and loosely used, people really do not understand how important it actually is. Right. And like like we said, the first thing to do is just say that I love you. That that is your simplest way of starting it. That is your ABC. And then we can go to graduate level of self love where all these things come in. Very nice. I find a simple act of just putting my hands on my heart. Is a very is a very calming and soothing experience. Just something as simple as yes. that. Yes, that's really nice. Yes. Lovely, Sheila. So, uh, thank you for sharing these things. And how can people learn more about your work? Uh, I have a website called Lumia24.com. L-U-M-I-E-R. -E, Lumia24.com. Yeah. I also have a YouTube channel by the same name, Lumia24. Yeah. So I'll share these really links. Have... I'll share these yes. links with everybody. YouTube channel and uh, your faith. Your, your, your... Yeah. Your, your 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 website yes. and they can look up your book i complete me as well yes yeah wonderful thank you and which part of the world do you live in so people know i live in india hyderabad india mm -hmm. so and do you do you do you tra teach in other parts of india and other parts of the world i well? yes i teach in bangalore uh, mumbai and hyderabad currently mm -hmm. and my retreats uh, normally happen once in six months they happen in various parts depending on which part I'd like to travel to at that point. That's time. a good one. Self-love. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. And the retreats are like four or five days long. How long are they? Yeah, yeah they're about three, they're three and a half days long. Three so and a half days. Normally Excellent. about four, four days is what people would need to spare. And people can see the details on your website? They can see the details on the website. You can see it on my social media. The exactly. retreat just got over. It was, my social media is filled with all the retreat pictures. Now. Oh, perfect. I think it'll be great. So please do share your links with me one more time and I'm going to put it up along with the video. I'll do that. Thank you. Nikita. All right, Sheila. Thank yes. you so much. It's been a joy to talk to you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Time to get on to our list of 108 now. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Goodbye. Okay, bye. Goodbye.